It was the first big gamble by a new government on a dream run. In late 2022, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese appointed Kevin Rudd to a coveted role in Washington, D.C. Can I also announce today that Kevin Rudd will be appointed as Australia's ambassador to the United States of America. Dr Rudd brings unmatched experience to the role. It is intended that he will commence his posting in early 2023. It was unprecedented. A former PM had never been appointed to Australia's most senior diplomatic role before. At the time, the Australian's chief international correspondent, Cameron Stewart, said it was... One of the biggest diplomatic gambles Australia has ever made on the world stage. But that wasn't why it raised eyebrows. See, Rudd had garnered a reputation for being one of America's most vocal critics on issues of foreign policy. That meant he was regularly at odds with the government's own position on certain issues. It's kind of the opposite of what an ambassador's supposed to do. Rudd was particularly iffy about the historic AUKUS Pact, which is a trilateral security partnership between Australia, the UK and the US to supply nuclear-powered submarines. The hope is that it'll put us in the best possible position to combat China's growing aggression in the Pacific. But K Rudd? Not a fan. We are being left strategically naked for 20 years based on what I do see to be the bungling of this new submarine project, which was after all launched by my government in 2009. Rudd also had former US President Donald Trump in his sights. He'd called Trump destructive and a traitor to the West, among other things. At the time, a second Trump presidency felt like a near impossibility. After losing to Joe Biden, Trump was facing an avalanche of legal action. For sexual assault, for fraud, for defamation, for harbouring classified government documents. There were 91 felony counts in all. Civil suits were swirling too and Trump's conduct in relation to the January 6 insurrection of the US Capitol was under scrutiny by the Senate. But fast forward to 2024, and Trump is on track to secure the Republican Party ahead of the November presidential election. Donald Trump dominating with all these demographic groups, men, women, voters under 45, voters over 45, very conservative voters. For a good while, he's been polling ahead of the incumbent, Joe Biden. But Trump's heard about Kevin Rudd's comments, and he's not happy. We also got China to think about, and our friends at Sky News Australia wanted me to ask you this. The AUKUS deal... That's what you're hearing is an interview between former Brexit Party leader Nigel Farage and Donald Trump. It'll air on GB News in the UK and on Sky News here in Australia. But now, of course, things have changed in Australia. We've got a Labour government in Australia. Now they've appointed Kevin Rudd, former Labour MP. I mean, he has said the most horrible things. You were a destructive president, a traitor to the West, and he's now Australia's ambassador in Washington. Yeah, well, I don't know. Would you take, would you he, take a phone call he from won't, him? He won't be there long if that's the case. I don't know much about him. Uh, I heard he was a little bit nasty. Uh, I hear he's not the brightest bulb. But I don't know much about him. But if uh, if he's at all hostile, he will not be there long. Well, in a way, this is the worst nightmare of the Australian government coming true to some degree. Cameron Stewart is the Australian's chief international correspondent. When they appointed Kevin Rudd to the post, he had made very strong criticisms of Donald Trump previous to becoming an ambassador. His comments at that time were not actually outlandish compared to many commentators. But the bottom line is, once you are an ambassador, those things can come back to haunt you. But then again, our former diplomats often haven't done political commentary in the same way that, that Kevin Rudd has. So perhaps it's not quite that surprising. The great question here is, to what degree would he actually take that seriously if he did become president? Kevin Rudd and the Australian Embassy in Washington have had a very calculated campaign to forge strong links across the Republican Party, including in the MAGA Trump camp. It's been a campaign that's been going for at least six months, very vigorously, whereby the embassy and its officials have tried to make connections with Trump's family, with the Republican campaign machine, with influencers, 
and basically more broadly across the party. And the interesting thing is that it's been quite a successful campaign to some degree and that even a lot of Republicans in Washington, when I was there speaking to people, commented on how well and how good the Australian outreach has been to the Republican side. But we all know that when it comes to Donald Trump, all of his minders can think one thing. If he thinks the other, then that's a problem. On Wednesday, the Australian government came to Kevin Rudd's defence quickly, issuing a statement that said, Kevin Rudd is doing a good job as Australia's ambassador to the United States. He has friends in the States too. Democratic Party Congressman Joe Courtney told the Australian Rudd's stint in DC has strengthened the alliance between America and Australia. Specifically, Courtney said Rudd has skillfully won consensus on AUKUS in a bitterly divided Congress. But now the question becomes, can Rudd survive a second Trump presidency if the Republican Party is victorious in November? And if Rudd does keep his job, can he keep his famously volcanic temper too? Look, I think Kevin Rudd has actually been quite disciplined. I think he's probably surprised a few people by being so disciplined during his time as ambassador. He hasn't spoken a lot to the media. He's been much more discreet. He's done a lot of stuff behind the scenes even the Liberals think he's done a good job in Canberra. But, I mean, (laughs) these ambassadorships go for many years, so we will see what happens. But I would have thought that Rudd so far has shown a lot of discipline, and I'd be surprised if that didn't continue because it would be very dangerous to his own position to do otherwise. Fostering support for AUKUS is undoubtedly the number one priority of Australia's ambassador to the US. So if Rudd falls out of Donald Trump's favour, it's worth considering if AUKUS could follow. I think that. Trump is likely to be very well inclined towards AUKUS to the extent that he really likes Australia. He likes the alliance between Australia and the US. And Australia is pouring many billions of dollars into America's submarine construction program as a part of AUKUS. So I think all of that would be favorably looked upon by Donald Trump. The concern might be, to some degree, whether he can get on with the Albanese government, and that would include Kevin Rudd. I mean, there'll be so many people within the embassy in Washington and in the Department of Foreign Affairs in Canberra trying to read the tea leaves here about what Donald Trump really meant, what he might do with AUKUS, what he might do with Australia. But the real truth is here, no one knows. He is just so unpredictable. We just have to wait and see. Coming up after the break, how Kevin Rudd's faring in a notoriously tough job. While I've got you, don't forget our subscribers get newsletters, special events and breaking news alerts direct to their phones. Check us out at theaustralian.com.au. We'll be back after this break. Being an ambassador isn't an easy job. Senior diplomats like Kevin Rudd are supposed to walk a fine line. They have to maintain strong relationships with the government of the day, without alienating an opposition that could beat it at the voting booth. Things only get more complicated when elections are in the mix. Cameron Stewart was formerly the Australian's correspondent in Washington DC, where he observed the work of Rudd's predecessors up close. It's a pretty big job. It's obviously Australia's most important diplomatic posting. You've got to really forge good links with both sides of politics. That's both sides of the Capitol Hill in the Congress, Republicans and the Democrats. You've got to forge good links with the White House. And it's it's actually critical because you've got to sort of push Australia's interests as hard as you possibly can. With Kevin Rudd, his great success so far as ambassador has been to help shepherd through legislation in Congress, which approves... America's ability to sell nuclear submarines to Australia. That's obviously a key part of August. So that was a great effort, and that's really been the biggest hallmark of his ambassadorship so far. For months now, Joe Biden has tailed Donald Trump in the polls. The general assumption based on that was that Trump would return to the White House in November. But the US government's action on humanitarian aid for Gaza and a generally well-received State of the Union address have prompted a bounce back for Biden. Above all, I see a future for all Americans. I see a country for all Americans. And I will always be president for all Americans because I believe in America 
I believe in you, the American people. Kevin Rudd might be in hot water right now, but could he come out the other side in an even better position if Biden makes it four more years in November? Let's say Joe Biden does get re-elected. He's very well disposed towards Australia also. He would be very well disposed towards Kevin Rudd. They're both on the same side of politics. And also remember that Biden is also a foundational member of AUKUS. So he has a lot of personal stake in defending AUKUS and promoting it. So look, the truth is that it would be easier for a Labor government in Australia and Kevin Rudd to deal with a re-elected Biden administration than it would be to deal with Donald Trump a second time around. That's not to say they can't deal with Donald Trump. It's just that Trump is a lot less predictable than Biden. Cameron Stewart is The Australian's chief international correspondent. You can read his inside story on the Australian Embassy's scramble to get Trump voters on board right now at theaustralian.com.au.